Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Good morning. I've got a 2011-2012 Freightliner Cascadia DEF. So that would be an EPA 10 with the DD15. Now my customer is telling me he had some issues where he had to hit the uh, override button and bring that down from uh, Shafter, California down to Montebello, California. So you're looking at, I don't know, two, three hours depending on the traffic and whatnot. Uh, his, he had some check engine lights. He had a bunch of fault codes. And right now, this is what's currently active. Okay, so when we plug in our, our software, our Detroit software, this is what we see. Okay, soot level high. Obviously, we know that because he can't do a regen. So that means he's probably at level four, level five. Next thing, you've got a few other fault codes, which, sorry for that glare, but there we go. So we've got a few other fault codes. Uh, regen temperature out of range low. Park regen failed. Regen temp, not reaching temp. Uh, so what we're looking at right now is just a simple fact that the filter is not getting hot enough as it's doing a regen. One of the things you're going to need to check, if you have the software, you can plug in, and this will give you a clue as to what's going on. This will let you know, hey, if it's not getting hot, we either have one of two things. Either something's going on with the doser or something's going on in the one box. But before we get to the one box and start taking shit apart, because it gets expensive, okay, what you want to do is you want to want to look at a few things. So I'm doing a regen. Now I went ahead and cleaned out the, the, uh, the S-pipe, the back of the S-pipe that gets blocked with carbon. Now this one had a lot of carbon built into it. Okay, that's probably why we weren't getting so much diesel being, uh, you know, being inserted into the back of the, um, excuse me, into the, uh, the filter itself when it's doing a regen. So right now we're doing a regen. Uh, looks like there's our percentage there and there's our temperature. So our temperatures look like where they need to be and I think that's actually a really good thing. You know, right now the first temperature is the DOC in, there's your DOC out, and there's your DPF out. Okay, so 600, 900, and 1,000 degrees. That's good. There's your dose for fuel pressure, okay? Your percentage, your PSI. So that, to me, tells me that that was causing the regen issue with the DOC not getting hot enough or the filters not getting hot enough. So what happens is you do a regen and it aborts. Regens take about 30 to 40 minutes. This case customer is telling me it took about 15 minutes and it, and it aborted, it would cut off. Okay, so right now I'll show you where the doser is on this. Uh, it's very easy to find. It's something you can do yourself. But again, this is what was coming up on the dash on the instrument cluster. I'm gonna scroll down to the diagnostics and you're gonna see all the different five fault codes. See, EEC means after treatment after treatment injector. Now, is that your DEF? No, because you don't have a DEF fault code, okay? There's another fault code regarding the after treatment injector. It's telling you where to look. DPF soot, that means your filter is very dirty, okay? So those are the fault codes regarding the filter itself. Now, when you go to your software, and again, you need someone that's gonna have the software. This helps out a lot. It eliminates the guessing, eliminates the spending and throwing money at the truck. So right now, see level five. That tells you he was maxed out, and that's uh, you know that's pretty critical to get to that level. But anyway, I'm going to show you the DPF. I'm sorry, the the uh, doser, the DPF doser, or the doser injector. Right after this is done with the regen. So right now it looks like we're again we're on the right path. We kind of uh, hopefully resolve the issue. And again, those are our temperatures. Our temperatures are good. I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know. Just another thing I wanted to add to this video. This. Uh, the fault codes that we have, as you can see here, SCR NOx conversion efficiency low. Okay, previously confirmed, previously active. Now what that means is one of your NOx sensors could be going out, either the inlet or the outlet. Okay, now the other thing you're gonna need to check is when you're doing a regen, okay, when you have the software, again, you've got a couple different tabs up here on the top. You wanna go to the one that says SCR system. Now down here, this is our NOx conversion efficiency. That's telling us it's 0.81. So it's about 80%, which is great. 70%, you're still passing. Other than that, you've got something either going on in your one box or your sensors are, are taking a crap or maybe a few other things. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that. That's our efficiency, 81%, which is good. Okay, very good. You have 90, obviously the closer to 100, the better, but you know, depending on the truck and depending on the sensors and you know, a number of things, that number will either go up or down see so now we're at 79 percent but again still passing so i just wanted to show you that and i'm going to go back really quick and i'm going to go to my dpf system and show you my temperatures okay 638 1000 1028 that's good so again see we have our doser is working uh psi is a little high usually i think those are about in the 20s but again 35 is still good it started off in 40 
which means that we probably did have some blockage there on the back of that S-pipe. Now, if you can take off that S-pipe and actually clean all that out, it would be a lot better, but I'm gonna show you an easier way, a faster way, and uh, it still works just as fine. Now, you see these little triangles with the exclamation mark, and that just probably means it's refreshing, so I'm not worried about that right now. And again, temperatures are good. I'm gonna keep you posted right now as soon as it's done or, or let you know if it's done. Okay, guys, so we're still doing the regen, and again, regen takes about 30, maybe 40 minutes, depending on how dirty or what level you are at as far as the soot level, okay? Now again, this particular truck was at level five. Now one of the things I kind of wish they would do when it comes to you know, the software, and I think only one does it, I think it's international. Anyway, one of the things I would be, would be great, it would be like a status bar, like in other words, okay, you're now like at level four, level three, level two, level one, and then back to zero. And you really don't know where you stand until the regen is completed. So what you want to do typically is once you start the regen and you feel that the engine is doing its regen, okay, the, the, the truck is doing the regen, not the engine, but the engine will respond a certain way. Okay, as you can tell, the newer trucks, they pretty much do a lower RPM regen. As you can tell, we're at about a thousand, okay? The shaking is because of the, the engine itself is generating heat to pass that down to the filter, to do the regen and so on and so forth. On the older trucks, 2008, 2009, 2010, and I think some of the 11s, the RPMs were like at 1500, 1600. They were loud, very different. Now this particular one, again, is maybe about 1000 to 1100 RPMs, okay? And again, we're still doing the regen. Our temperatures are looking great. Our doser's looking good, our percentage, our PSI, all that stuff. Right now, our pressure is good. Our DOC inlet, DPF outlet, keep an eye on those. You want those numbers to be good. Okay, you don't want them high. That means you've got some other restrictions going on in the filter. Okay, then at that point, we know it's a filter issue. Now, when do you know this is done doing a regen? Honestly, it'll stop on its own. The RPMs will go down back to idle, five, 600 RPMs, 650 RPMs. And these lights on your dash, on your cluster, should all go away, with the exception of probably the one telling you that your filter is hot. Okay, so I'm gonna keep you posted. I just wanna show you something, a little bit of an update and some little observations and things to look out for while you're trying to clear this fault code. And again, look at your temperature on your water. That's good, 200 degrees. If your temperature was a lot lower, let's say 150, now obviously your engine's gonna have some difficulty getting hot and means that it's not able to, it won't be able to pass the heat onto the filter. That means you may have a thermostat issue or something else going on. Anyway, so we're good. I'll keep you posted. Okay, so right now the regen is starting to kind of settle and taper off. As you can see on our dash, just like I told you, check engine light, stop engine light, all those lights go away with the exception of your filter light telling you your filter is very hot. Now these are the temperatures, you're gonna see them start to drop as the filter itself starts to cool or the regen starts to finish and go down and cool off. So right now the DOC is at 55, 550, and these will start to slowly drop. And again, you can see these get very, very hot. So when you're doing a regen, after you're done, if you still have to pull out the, the one box or the filters or touch that, that just honestly leave it alone for a couple hours. Don't touch it, leave it alone, come back, go have lunch, and it'll still be hot as hell. You can probably cook your lunch on top of that filter, that's how hot it is, okay? So as you can hear right now, I don't know if you can hear in the background, but the RPMs are now starting to taper off. See, we're gonna go right down to idle speed, 600, 590 something, so 600 RPMs. These are gonna go ahead and start cooling off. Okay, now they just cool off by themselves. Now, as we're doing a park regen, it's gonna take longer because again, there's not that wind going up underneath the truck and cooling it off. And you're gonna see right here that your filter is now at level zero, which means we did a successful regen. And again, that was because the, the uh, doser injector, okay, the one that's behind the turbo coming off the S-pipe was clogged up or backed up. Okay, it's very common. Again, this truck has, let me just give you a quick little view here, has 673,000 miles. So you imagine that many miles, that many hours, that's a lot of carbon that comes out the back uh, of the exhaust, down the turbo, down the S-pipe, and again, eventually it just starts to pile up, okay? So I wanna show you that again, we have a good successful region, level zero. Right now we only have one fault code active, and that's just because that's something to do with the truck or on the Freightliner side. Engine ignores ACC control. That's not my problem. That's gonna be a different different problem for a different day. So as of right now, this is good. We're gonna go ahead and clear all the fault codes. Okay, it's no big deal if you clear them. Usually good to leave them before you do you know do a successful regen. So again, once you do everything successfully, clear everything. Some will go away, some will not, but for the most part, most will. So that is a good successful regen. Okay, if you have any questions, hit me up. 
is the side view of the DD15. Okay, there's your EGR actuator. There's your turbo. Behind this heat shield is your turbine. And right back in there, I'm gonna zoom in for you. Okay, that is your doser injector, okay? The line that comes to it right in the middle, that is your fuel line. Once you take off that fuel line, it's a 14 millimeter and you might need a 12 millimeter to hold down the actual injector, okay? Remove those. You can use a screwdriver, coat hanger, something solid that's gonna let you get in there and you can actually push out the carbon, okay? When you push out the carbon, that makes, you know, that just verifies that it's either blocked or it's not blocked. If it's not blocked, well, you got another problem. In this case, it was blocked. We cleared that out, put it all back together, did a regen.